A senior government official has drunk a glass of water from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant to demonstrate its safety after being dared to do so by a reporter. On October 7th, the plant's operator, the Tokyo Electric Power Company, began spraying about 70 tons of purified water per day on the facility's compound. The water is taken from the plant's number five and six reactor buildings and used for after removal of radioactive substances and salt. The firm and the government's nuclear safety agency say the level of radioactive cesium in the purified water is below the government's standard for bathing. Cabinet Office Parliamentary Secretary Yasuhiro Sonoda drank the water at a press conference on Monday. Asked if he could erase public concerns about the water, Sonoda said he drank it because he was asked to do so. He added that his act cannot ensure the water's safety and that the best way to do so is with data. We never practice that one, do we? Panicking. We never practice panicking. We practice going out neatly. Pardon me, fire. Look out. Pardon me, fire. Fire. Yes, pardon me, fire. A Japanese research group has created a color-coded world map which for the first time shows estimated carbon dioxide emissions using data acquired by a satellite. The group at the National Institute for Environmental Studies used data from the country's global gases observing satellite Ibuki and ground observation data collected for a year from June 2009 to estimate regional CO2 emissions. There are 64 regions on the map, with red parts showing areas where CO2 emissions exceed CO2 absorption. The green parts show where emissions were less than absorption levels. The researchers found that CO2 absorption in high latitude regions in the northern hemisphere, including Russia's Siberia, was higher than earlier estimated. They add that greater CO2 emissions were observed in regions near the equator. The researchers say satellite data allowed them to reduce errors in estimating emissions. Vietnamese Prime Minister Nguyen Tan Zun is pressing ahead with a plan to buy nuclear technology from Japan. Zun reconfirmed his country's policy to purchase Japanese nuclear reactors despite the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. The visiting Prime Minister met mon Monday with Japanese Trade and Industry Minister Yukio Edano. Jun says Vietnam trusts Japan's advanced nuclear technology, and he said his government wants firms here to build the world's safest nuclear power plants in his country. Vietnam plans to build 14 nuclear reactors by 2030 to meet increasing electricity demand amid its rapidly growing economy. Japan and Vietnam concluded an agreement in January that allows Japan to export nuclear technology to Vietnam. Japanese companies have won contracts to build two reactors. Vietnam plans to start operating them in 2021. Japanese experts say that following the Fukushima accident, other countries are expecting to demand more thorough safety of nuclear technology while promoting exports. Japanese experts say that following the Fukushima accident, other countries are expecting to demand more thorough safety of nuclear technology while promoting exports. Well, the world population has reached 7 billion. The United Nations says it will celebrate the births of all babies born on Monday as the 7 billionth member of the human race. The UN says humankind has more than doubled over the past half century from 3 billion in 1959. It adds the size of humanity is expected to continue its rapid growth and will reach 10 billion by the end of this century. The United Nations says inhabitants of Asia, the most of any continent, are projected to reach 5.2 billion by the mid-21st century. The African population is due to extend to 3.6 billion, triple the current number by the year 2100. But the size of industrial nations, such as those of Japan and Europe, is forecasted to fall because of low birth rates. 
The average birth rate in those nations stands at 1.7, which is short of the 2.1 level required to maintain a steady population. The United Nations warns that the growing number of people is likely to worsen problems facing the international community. They include poverty in developing countries, water shortages, and heavy urbanization where people are concentrated in major cities. U.S. Secretary General Pan Ki-moon says while celebrating the births of the new babies, he will call on the international community to make greater efforts to address these problems. Preparations are underway to restart a Japanese nuclear reactor, the first since the Fukushima accident. The reactor in southwestern Japan shut down automatically about a month ago. Kyushu Electric Power Company said on Monday that it will resume operations at the number four reactor at the Genkai nuclear power plant. The company said it will take several days before it's fully operational again. The facility was halted in early October due to abnormalities in its cooling system. In a report submitted to the government's nuclear safety agency, the operator attributed the stoppage to a procedural error by employees. The agency has approved the report and the measures taken by the company. This type of stoppage does not require the central government stress tests needed to restart idle nuclear reactors. The tests were introduced after the March disaster. Opposition to the restart at the Genkai plant is anticipated amid public concern over the safety of nuclear power generation. Belgium has decided to shut down all of its nuclear reactors. Public concern has been mounting since Japan's nuclear catastrophe in Fukushima. The European nation has seven nuclear reactors in operation at two plants. Nuclear power from those plants currently accounts for over 50% of the nation's electricity. Six political parties that are in discussions on forming a new government agreed to draw up the shutdown plan. It calls for the closure of the three oldest nuclear reactors by 2015 and a complete exit by 2025. The parties say they will hammer out the details so while considering alternative energy sources to replace nuclear power. Belgium passed a law in 2003 to abolish nuclear energy, but it was under review due to concerns about the economic impact. The Fukushima nuclear accident influenced the decision to go ahead with the shutdown. Well, clouds are gathering over the land of the rising sun, with Japan lurching worryingly towards a financial crisis. The country has run up a huge national debt as it struggles to recover from this year's earthquake and tsunami disaster. Shiori Komatsu looks at how Japan's dire circumstances is leaving it trapped and teetering on the edge. In many ways, the Japanese economy is like this fish. Caught, dried out, frozen and now having great chunks of value sliced clean off. Take the seafood industry itself. Japanese sushi shops rake in about $17 billion annually, with hungry customers consuming 9 million tons of seafood along the way. It's an addiction repeated all around the world, but it's not helping the main exporter, which has been left floundering. <laughs> Japanese food is the most popular food in the world, and definitely I think there are many other companies like ours doing the same business. And everywhere I think these companies are suffering major consequences from a strong yen. When the national currency is up, it pushes exports down. Japanese goods just too expensive to compete on the world stage. And as profits disappear, so do people's livelihoods. Stagnant growth, the strong end, and the massive national debt. Some economists fear that Japan may be only a few years away from its own major economic crisis. And since this East Asian nation remains the world's number three economy, the consequences of that would be global. This is something Japan's political leaders are determined to avoid, and many are calling for urgent action. Japanese industry can probably endure the current 75 yen to the dollar level for a little while, but if this situation doesn't change over a longer period, I think we're going to see Japanese factories and large companies move their operations overseas, places like Vietnam, Thailand or China. 
This would lead to a hollowing out of Japanese domestic industry and create unemployment. Japan is facing an extraordinary economic crisis. Despite the worries of ruling party lawmakers, it is not clear there is anything the Japanese government can really do to prevent the soaring yen from leaving Japanese businessmen starved of money. In Japan, the linen supply industry is gradually losing its ability to sell their products. The machines, too, just aren't selling. Since the world faces these conditions, Japanese companies have to look for whatever opportunities they can discover. But that's not going to be easy in a country where the government itself is deeply in the red. Japan has the highest national debt among major economies owing almost twice as much as the economy makes in an entire year. Couple that with the funds needed to rebuild after the devastation unleashed by the earthquake and tsunami earlier this year. And it seems Japan is fighting a battle it may not be able to win. Shihori Komatsu, RT Tokyo. The China Syndrome. It's about people, people who lie, and people faced with the agony of telling the truth. People like Kimberly Wells, a television reporter paid to smile, not to think. A few words about a veterinarian who makes house calls on sick fish, or is it aquarium calls? Richard Adams, a cameraman who never learned how to play by the rules. We need to get that other room, get that radiation all over that cute little body. Jack Goodell, an engineer who knows too much to tell the truth. In anything that man ever does, there's some element of risk, right? Well, that's why we have what we call defense in depth. And cares too much to lie. No accident. It will start with a tremor in a nuclear power plant. Where it will end will depend on three people. I would say you're probably lucky to be alive. The same for the rest of Southern California. Jane Fonda. Let's face it, you didn't get this job because of your investigative abilities. Kimberly, don't fight it. Jack Lemon. There was a vibration. Michael Douglas. I don't know that accident is the right word. Accident is the right word. The China Syndrome. The harder they try, the more resistance they meet. They've got their own security men. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you want me to make it any clearer? The closer they get. No. the more threatening it becomes. No. The China Syndrome. Today, only a handful of people know what it really means. And they're scared. Soon, you will know. The China Syndrome.